All right, folks, we're back. It's Tales from the P.O. Box. We've been away for quite a while, so this haul is massive. It's going to be spread over many videos. Uh, let's just get started and cut out any intro. So first off, we have a postcard from our friend Liquor Jim, and Liquor Jim says, Hey, Jeff, I've been away from home for the last month or so, and I fell off the postcards. Great P.O. Box vids. By the way, very thankful you brought back Good Morning Pop Culture this morning. It is certainly a great way to start the day. Thanks for engaging so openly with your fans, Liquor Jim. Well, Liquor Jim, thank you very much for joining us on Good Morning Pop Culture. Uh, some of our listeners have noticed we've had a lot more Good Morning Pop Cultures as of late. It's a lot of fun, and I do like doing it. This next one says, Do Not Bend. So let's open it up and see what we got inside. There we go. I'm just going to take it back here. And, oh! Ah. We have Star Wars comics. 70s. Well, I think this is 80s. Uh, Star Wars comics right here. So, let's see. This comes from our friend, uh, TD. So, TD, thank you very much. Now, let's take a look at these uh, Star Wars comic books, because we talk about Star Wars a lot here on this channel. So, we have issues 7 and 8, and issue number 60. Now, 60, we got... Is that Lando? That has to be Lando with a wig on. Huh. 80s were a weird time. Let's take a look at this one, because I'm just so curious to know what's going on in issue number 60 of Star Wars. So, ah, there we go. Han Solo. The big con. Huh. That's a really great drawing. Well, that's by Ron Friends and Tom Palmer. Those guys are excellent artists, so no surprise there. And uh, I think they use it again up here at the top. Guy looks familiar. Alright, you can tell it's a good Star Wars comic when Chewbacca looks like Chewbacca. No offense to the, uh, is this Carmine Infantino that's the artist on this one? I don't know, but let's do a comparison of Chewbacca's. There's a man named Al Williamson who I would say is the best Star Wars comic book artist, and uh, he draws Chewbacca perfectly. So this issue that I have in my hand is from Howard Chaikin. You know what? Howard Chaikin's Chewbacca is pretty good, too. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. Which Chewbacca's do you prefer? This Chewbacca over here, or this Chewbacca over here? Uh, personally, I like this Chewbacca. But thank you, TD. These Star Wars books are going to be added to my collection of comic books. Uh, I do not own these ones. I have newer Star Wars comics, not a lot of the old Marvel stuff. Maybe one day I'll decide that I'm going to collect the entire Marvel Comics run of Star Wars books and uh, you know, get more stuff I don't need. But TD, thank you very much. This next one is a package, and it comes all the way from Iowa. That's our friend Uncle Ben. So Uncle Ben, thank you very much. Let's see what you sent us. You sent in quite a few things. So we're going to be um, opening a lot of stuff from Uncle Ben. So first off, well, like this one comes with a letter. Two letters. Okay. So first off, we got a Healthy Body Start Back 2.0. So uh, yeah, I agree. Healthy Body, Healthy Mind, all that fun stuff. I am all about that. And we got a card and a letter. How to Live for God. So, I'm going to read this off air. So, let's see what Uncle Ben sent us. Ooh. So, first off, we have a, a little motorcycle. And then we have... Ooh, Star Wars cars. Cool. So, we have... Uh, sorry about the motorcycle. We have the Ralph McQuarrie van. That is so 70s. Uh, it's not even funny. <laughs> we have a Tuscan Raider. Dune buggy, I believe. So... You know, as much as I like Star Wars, there's one problem. Why would the Tusken Raiders want to ride on a Bantha when they can have this? Luke Skywalker's car can fly. They need some horsepower. Oh, you know, I'm going to save this last one for the end because it's amazing. Next up, we have a Jin Erso Jeep or Dune Buggy. Just Sergeant Jin Erso, a character car. And she's okay. I like Jin Erso enough. She looks very unimpressed, though, right there. Look at that. Yeah, me too, Jin. I saw The Last Jedi. And finally, my is this my favorite movie car? It's tied for number one. The DeLorean Time Machine from Back to the Future. It's perfection. Now, this is from part two, obviously. It has Mr. Fusion. 
And uh, this is a nicer high-end Hot Wheels, so thank you very much, Ben. Now, let's see what your letter says. Oh, wait, there's more in the box. We got uh, some InfoWars stickers, and we got a letter that says, 18 wheels for your dozen roses, or one of the dozens. Hey, Jeff, I'm old enough to have grown up catching music compilation commercials after Saturday morning cartoons. I'm not a big fan of country music, but the brief ditties from those commercials stuck with me. When you started unboxing a dozen roses of Rose Ticos, the chorus for 18 Wheels and a Dozen Roses immediately popped up in my head. I'm sure you can find the song on YouTube. I tried to keep them Star Wars themed, but my little small town Walmart didn't have enough. I can't even find any of the bike toys as filler for the last two wheels and the 18. Hopefully you like the substitute filler. I really do. <laughs> Next month's surprise will be more disc-oriented. Hoping to have it to you on or before April 1st. Sincerely, Uncle Ben Parker. <laughs> now, by the way, Uncle Ben, sorry that I'm uh, reading these so late, but I have all your stuff, and I'm going to be going through it through multiple videos. Uh, P.S. I don't have a nephew yet, though I've discussed the notion with my sister and cousins of them naming her son Peter. I've also discussed the name Howie, too. That's Howie. Howie Parker. Parker. <laughs> oh, P.P.S. If you ever want to be clever, should we ever meet in person ask how you been, Parker? Sounds a lot like Ben. Isn't phonetics fun? P.P.P.S. What does it take to get the box number 5069? Did you manage that by request, or was it blind chance? Like my high school <laughs> food card being 0666. Well, Uncle Ben Parker, it was by chance. I just signed up online and they gave me the P.O. box that I have. So the 5069 wasn't intentional. It was just luck. Now, uh, I believe we have another one from Uncle Ben. We're just going to open his uh, envelopes right here. Oh, we got more art. Oh, cool. All right. Oh, this. I remember seeing this online and now I own the original. <laughs> this is perfect for woke busters. So there we go. There's that. And it says, Dear Jeff, this is for Dion. If you'd be so kind as to pass it on. I might. I might. I'd be much obliged. However, if he doesn't want it, it's all yours. If he decides to burn it or rip it up, film it and email it to me. Uh, have any other odd requests? Let me know. Sincerely, Uncle Ben Parker. More surprises to come. Well, this will go to Dion at Horror Hound. I would never, ever burn artwork, especially original artwork. So if Dion is a Ghostbuster and... <sighs> It, this looks oddly familiar. She looks like a, uh, hmm. She looks like she's from New York. So this next one comes from Fred. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Hail, Jeff, and all the world-class bullshitters. Love what you're doing in the fandom menace. I hope this funny picture will inspire you to cut down the SJWs like winter wheat. Keep on making awesome comics, videos, and growing your YouTube channel. I deliver vehicles for a living. Sort of a truck driver. Your videos keep me laughing and inform me on the state of pop culture. Can I purchase a copy of Stealing Solo? Yes, I'll be announcing that uh, soonish. Don't worry. You had mentioned that you would allow for future sales in the High Council. Yes, I will. Your channel was the first I found after The Force Awakens and that gut punch from Roundheaded Ruin Johnson. Give me a shout out on your P.O. Box videos. You can use my name. Well, Fred, here's your shout out, my friend. Thank you for everything you do. You, sir, add a class to the fandom menace. Dion, stay away from the horses and don't let them honey dick you. <laughs> Sincerely, Fred. <laughs> well, that was awesome. <laughs> So thank you, Fred, for your very kind words. I love the letters. I actually have a special box that I keep all paperwork from the fans in. Uh, getting my office a little more organized, and uh, that's where I've been keeping the stuff the entire time. So thank you to Fred. Thank you to Uncle Ben Parker. Now let's open up some packages. We got a lot of boxes. I seriously have another industrial-sized garbage bag. So this is another Amazon box. Let's see if we can move that up slightly. Let's try this. Anyway, there's this Amazon box. Let's see what's inside said Amazon box. Oh, okay, this uh, says, Jeff, this is box two of three. It's from me personally. I hope you can find a home for your Spider-Man shelf. I love this style from Bandai. I hope you enjoy it. See you in the next package. I'm guessing this is from our friend Salvador, right? Well, let's open it up and... Oh, cool! Oh, this is too awesome. Oh, cool. Uh, on Mitsu Black Armor Spider-Man from Tamashi Nations, Tamashi Nations. So this is incredible, and we're going to open this up in just a second. So here's the back of it. He looks like a symbiote samurai Spider-Man. Say that three times fast. 
And instead of webs, he has chains with grappling hooks. Okay, this is too kick-ass to not open up right now. So let me change that and do it right here. Let's see what is in the box. You know, I wanted to title this What's in the Box, but like everybody does that joke from Seven. So Tales from the P.O. Box is a throwback to my favorite comic book series, Tales from the Crypt. So there we go. We have the interior box, which very rarely is ever done on a toy. So that kicks ass. And now let's see what we got. We have the direction sheet, which is mostly in Japanese. So, um, okay, I won't eat any of the small parts. And let's see Spider-Man. Again, a nice card... What is this cardboard? It's like a really nice high-end paper. By the way, folks, if you're listening and you hear the backgrounds of my neighborhood, I apologize. I cannot help that I live on a busy, busy street. So let's get this very beautiful figure out of the package. Ooh, let me get that on camera, actually. So this is incredible. A Samurai Symbiote Spider-Man. Oh, my God. The articulation is great. Even got the little toe pivots and the ankle rocker and all that stuff. Shout out to our good friend Glenn Webb, rest in peace. And this is just an incredible figure. You got the spider on the back. Is that coming in clearly? Yeah, I hope so. There we are. So this is awesome. Let's see what some of the accessories are. So we have uh, a lot of different hands. We have chains, we have katana, which is Japanese for sword. Uh, if you've seen Samurai Cop, you know what that means. We have, okay, so, oh, these are so cool. So this is a long chain accessory. We have the grappling hook. We have a little clip for the wrist. And uh, well, that ain't going into focus, sorry. But it's a real metal chain, and when you get these Japanese import figures, you get the best of the best. I swear by SH Figure Arts, Mafex, Mafex, however you want to pronounce it, all of them. They really do beat the American equivalent. And this is beautiful, and this will definitely go on my Spider-Man shelf. Uh, I kind of want to not even put it fully away so I can display them today. Uh, I think I may. I think it's going up there. This this kicks ass. As always, Salvador, I believe this is from you. Because the note just says, box two of three, and I thank you. Now, speaking of boxes, uh, this one comes from our friend Uncle Ben. And let's see, it's a, uh, it's a big box. It's a priority mailer. And let's see what's in said priority mailer. Oh, okay. Don't want to show any addresses. Oh, ooh. Looks like we got a box full of DVDs. Cool. So, let's see what we got in this box. First off, a note. Dear Jeff and WCBS, as promised, more of the unwanted collection of the one Toby Morrow. The general theme for this batch is quirky, funny, or bizarre. Let me know if I hit the mark well enough. Sincerely, Uncle Ben Parker. <laughs> well, let's see, Uncle Ben, what you sent us. So, first off, uh, I see this movie and I love it. We got Caddyshack. Caddyshack is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, those, well, Ted Knight's cool, but three of those guys are all-time comedy legends. I don't know if I'd call Ted Knight a comedy legend, but he is the voice of the Super Friends. Then we have the final seasons of the Tudors. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to catch up on the other seasons. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about this show. Who's in it? Jonathan Reese Myers. Henry Cavill, okay. So Superman and a bunch of actors I've never heard of. Well, Jolie Richardson. She's kind of... Oh, Max von Sydow. I, if I keep reading who's in the show, I'm going to probably like it just from the box. Speaking of like, I already like this one right here. Uh, this is a contender for as good as Caddyshack because this is three films in one. The Amityville Horror, Carrie, and Child's Play. I might watch Child's Play this afternoon. When I'm recording this, Child's Play has been out one day. It'll probably flop at the box office, but I like Chucky movies, and Catherine Hicks is not related to me. Just want to put that out there. Next, we got... Theater Bazaar. Oh, The Theater Bazaar. This sounds fun. Uh, I can't really show too much of the back, but it looks awesome, if you know what I mean. Now we have, oh, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. This takes me back. I love Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. That song, I Kid, I Kid. It's a good song. I like it. Now, let's see what this is. Ooh, four film favorites. Cult Thrillers Collection. We have... Just Cause with Sean Connery and Lawrence Fishburne. 
Dead Calm, starring Sam Neill. We also have Altered State and the Ninth Configuration. Ooh, William Peter Blatty, that guy, did The Exorcist. Well, he didn't direct it. William Friedkin directed it, but he wrote it. So, that may be on my list of something to watch right after Child's Play. I gotta do some artwork, but I can have a movie on in the background and get us just as much work done. Uh, Chasing Christmas. This is brand new. Still wrapped in the plastic. Uh, <laughs> Tom Arnold, Andrea Roth, Jed Reese, and Leslie Jordan. Well, when Tom Arnold is the big draw in your film, I'm actually excited because I love Tom Arnold movies. The Stupids? Let's talk. The Cooler, starring William H. Macy and Maria Bello and Alec Baldwin. I like Maria Bello. William H. Macy is an unsung hero of cinema. And Alec Baldwin, while a douche, has been in some great stuff. So, I like this box, man. I really like what's in here. We got Loving Vincent, so uh, Van Gogh or Van Gogh if you're a Doctor Who fan. And who is in this film? Uh, I've never heard of anybody that's in it. Well, Saoirse Ronan or Soirose Ronan or whatever. I know her. But this could be fun. We also got... Circle of Iron, David Carradine, from a story by Bruce Lee. Sold. History Channel. Nazi POWs in America. Okay. Well, I like the History Channel. Let's see, there's no... Okay. Okay, 2002. Hmm, I'll have to check this one out. I'm going to let Kendo watch that, too. He's a huge World War II history guy. We got Valhalla Rising. This is the uh, one of the few movies in this box that I've seen. This is a violent-ass movie. Dion and I would get drunk and watch this when we lived together in the apartment. So, uh, Dion, if you watch this, Valhalla Rising is coming over, bro. I'm taking the horror hound. Then we got Tom Green. It's <laughs> Shred. Ride or be rided. Shredder. Wow, I can't speak. Ride or be ridden. <laughs> that was a mistake. Anyway, Tom Green... <laughs> oh, is this Dave England from Jackass right here? Like, I can't see. There we go. Is that him? Because that looks just like him. Huh. Poor guy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we got uh, Warren Beatty in the Parallax View. Hmm. Never heard of this. Uh, as a superb drama about one man's paranoia that turns out to be total incredible fact. Oh, man. Political thrillers. I've been watching a lot of 70s stuff. Uh, All the President's Men, the one Robert Redford went the Concord, something like Concord. It's not Flight of the Concords. It's that band. That, that seems fun, too. That might actually have shot up on my list. Then we got Immortal, a film by... somebody. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Charlotte Rampling. She's old school. I know her. Oops. Huh. Ooh. All right. It's a sci-fi. Futuristic sci-fi that takes place in the year 25... Excuse me, 2095. Then we got Sunshine Cleaning starring Emily Blunt, Amy Adams, and Alan Arkin. Oh, my God. Funny and gently heartbreaking. It says Bruce Handy from Vanity Fair. I wonder what Scott Mendelson would say about this film. <laughs> Oh, almost dropped the stack of movies. That's off camera. You won't see that. We got Raising Arizona. No, we don't. I can't read. It says Russian Dolls. <laughs> I was reading it from the side. I thought we had Raising Arizona. I was like, cool. So, who are some of these women? We got... I don't know anybody. Huh. I've never heard of this movie, but it could be cool. I will give it a watch. All right. White Coats starring... Dave Thomas. <laughs> Let's play doctor. Let's not. Then we got Bones, Stones, and Jeans. The Origin of Modern Humans. Cool. Looks more like a documentary, but I'm always down for some uh, documentary and science stuff. And then here we go. Gutter Balls. Brutally violent, oversexed, and over the top. Amazing. So, uh... Yeah, this movie looks fun. I bet you Nick loves it. So, uh, Uncle Ben Parker, thank you very much. Uh, 